Number five. This is the hardest rock song to become a hit this year. Its lead instrument is a xylophone. Ain't it fun? First time I heard Paramore, a friend of mine dubbed them Fallout Girl. But whatever else you want to say about them, though, they're a much more direct band than Fallout Boy ever were. Fallout Boy would never, ever write a song about living in the real world, and if they did, they'd stuff it full of arch, trying too hard metaphors that don't make sense. And I mean that in a loving way. I like a lot of Fallout Boy songs because of all those things. Please don't hurt me. <sighs> I don't mind. The continued existence of Paramore in 2014 was confusing. We, we don't have a lot of rock bands anymore. Real rock bands who release songs that are unequivocally rock songs. Apparently the way to make rock songs and still get on the radio is making them sound like Sheila E. in Miami Sound Machine. So what are you gonna do when the world don't open us around you? In many ways, Ain't It Fun sounded like pretty much no other big hit of the year because it was a rock song, and because it was a weird mix of styles I'd never heard before, and most of all because it was really good. impressive that even after losing two key members, Paramore still sounds like a real band and not the Haley Williams show. I dare say they emerge from that band trauma the tightest they've ever been. The only reason I was a tiny bit down on this song is I wasn't quite sure who she was making fun of. Probably me, I figured. Don't go crying to your mama, cause you're on your own in the real world. But it turns out the person who couldn't handle the real world was Haley herself. After all the band trauma, they relocated from Nashville to LA, and she found she was no longer the big fish in the pond. Apparently on the showbiz hierarchy, being in a successful rock band makes you less important than Kourtney Kardashian's plumber's dog. So this was her way of telling herself to tough up rather than cry about not being the most popular girl in school anymore. I'm not sure Los Angeles counts as the real world, but I get the point regardless. Tough up, don't whine. It's inspiring, really. Ain't it fun living in the real world? To that I can say unequivocally, no. Screw the real world. If I get 100% completion, I can unlock all the concept art! Number four. Hey, Paw. Hello. Wanna hear the new song from that indie chick you like? See ya. It's about drinking and partying. YOLO! Well, bye. Hey, where are you going? Come here and check out this auto-tune. It's great! Uh, the little girl you see there is not Sia. Matter of fact, I'm not entirely sure Sia is a real person. Are we sure she exists? I mean, where is she? Prove it. She's not in this video. I'm nothing to do. Not in that one either. Hey, I heard you are a wild Nowhere to be seen here. Maybe on the album cover? No. Let's check out billboard.com. No? Hmm. Wait a minute. What happens if you play this song backwards? Sia died in 2010 and was replaced by a sound alike imposter. Ha! I knew it. Party girls, don't get hurt, can't feel anything. At least Ed Sheeran was famous in the mainstream before going pop. Sia was not. She was strictly underground, and then all of a sudden she started writing pop songs. And not artsy indie pop, I mean regular mainstream Hot 100 club shit. She'd been writing behind the scenes for Christina Aguilera and Rihanna for a while, so much so that it's difficult to say whether Sia is trying to sound like Rihanna or Rihanna started sounding like her. And yet, despite this, she doesn't seem to want to be a pop star. Which is a shame, because she's one of the best we've had in a long time. Mostly I like this one because it's such a brutal display of sheer raw power. Goddamn operatic is what it is. She's not just gonna swing from the chandelier, she's gonna take it off the ceiling and shatter all the windows. I actually had two songs about women dealing with pain via substance abuse, but Chandelier is by far the better one. Habits Stay High was just it's a little too on the nose. Also, if her drug problem is this bad, I think it has a deeper cause than a breakup. And also, she makes being high sound miserable. 
this is the way being high makes her feel. Why does she keep doing it? But Chandelier captures everything. The fun and the thrill and the regret and the horrible messiness of it all. It, in fact, it's just an incredibly messy performance all around, and messy is exactly what the song calls for. Sam Smith plays everything so tight and controlled that his songs never come to life, but Sia is alive. Maybe not alive for much longer if she doesn't get down from that chandelier, but yeah, for the moment she sounds alive. I don't know if Sia really wants to continue with this pop stuff, maybe she doesn't. Like I said, she doesn't seem all that comfortable with being a pop star. But whatever she does after this, I'm sure she'll be happy, regardless if she never troubles the Hot 100 again. Not that that's really her. On for tonight, on for tonight. Number three. When I met you in the summer. I've said many times before that I'm, I'm not a fan of producer-driven techno pop. I just don't like you, Calvin Harris. I don't like your face, I don't like your voice, I don't like your stupid, terrible music. I don't like you, David Guetta. I don't like you, Swedish House Mafia. I don't like you, Avicii. You're okay, Avicii. But for the most part, the genre doesn't do much for me. It always feels like it's missing something. Some kind of spark of personality that just isn't there. But uh, in 2014, I think I started to warm up to it. Like, they made a lot of good music this year. Producers sure got better work out of Sam Smith as a featured artist than he got out of himself. But there's one song that really put it over the top. A song so perfect, I don't really know what to say about it. Just play it. Rather be is almost inhumanly good. Like when I say this genre doesn't have personality, that's still true. It's just that here it's a good thing. It's kind of too flawless to be sullied by stupid human hands. It's just immaculate. In fact, I'm, I'm at a loss here. I don't know if I have any real entry point into this. I mean, I, it has lyrics, but I'm, I'm not sure what any of them mean. We're different and the same. Get you another name. Switch up the batteries. That literally meant nothing. Well, literally it meant literally nothing. Symbolically, it somehow meant everything. If anything, it's that violin that keeps it tethered to earth. And a much better example of acoustic instruments in techno than Wake Me Up was, if I might say. I hear that YouTube star Lindsey Stirling is making a foray into mainstream pop, but as far as I'm concerned, she'll never be able to top this one. Yeah, look, Rather Be is most enjoyable if you don't try to think about it at all. Like the best techno, it doesn't have to be about anything, it's just mood music. It's really good mood music that puts me in a really good mood. So, uh, there you go. I love this song. Number two. Back when I reviewed Call Me Maybe, I criticized it a lot for being, quote, girly. Now, there have been some people who've got on my case for that, like, hey, what's wrong with being girly? Well, I'll tell you what. Nothing. You got me. Fine. I had a point in there somewhere that got lost, but I didn't mean to say that girly is automatically bad. I like plenty of girly things. For example... Charlie XCX is, I guess, the version of Lord who isn't too good for pop music. That's not a knock against either of them. God knows, I like Lord a lot, and she's probably smart enough to never collaborate with Iggy Azalea. It's like they recorded Fancy specifically to vindicate Royals. Ugh. But I suspect Lord's career will take her far away from pop music, while Charlie XCX seems pretty dedicated to making pop music and making it right. And this was by far the best thing she's ever done. Boom Clap was going to be the number one on this list for the longest time. I love this song. I make me feel good, come on to me, come on to me now. Sound in my heart, I first heard Boom Clap in The Fault in Our Stars, the unbearably beautifully romantic movie about children dying of slow, horrible diseases. Not my genre, but it was pretty good. But the thing that really stuck with me was this song, which I started listening to immediately. And that's saying a lot for me, because I have kind of a bad knee-jerk reaction to the words boom and clap. 
I might have mentioned. I guess the difference between this and Call Me Maybe is that this isn't light getting this, which is cheap and forgettable. This is a love song about full-on actual love, which sticks with you. Or it does for me at least. I would forgive a dozen more Iggy Azalea collaborations if we get more of these. There's probably no song I listened to this year more than this one. Uh. I really did intend for this to be number one this year, up until The Wire was my number one. But before we get to why it isn't, some honorable mentions. Cause you're a sky, cause you're a sky full of stars. Weird to say, but I like Coldplay's EDM sellout way more than nearly anything they released when they were big. I'm not sure why this is credited to Coldplay and not Avicii featuring Coldplay though. Full disclosure, I might like this song because ESPN used it pretty extensively in their World Cup coverage this year, so this is basically a jock jam to me. Oh, and speaking of disclosure... You're lucky these Disclosure guys came along, Sam Smith, or you would be one of my least favorite artists of this year. Oh wait, there was this one too. Good stuff, Sam Smith. Stop making your own music. I do like that we have a song about doing the la la la, I can't hear you bit like a ten year old. Turn down for what? Yeah! I told you to be on here. Honestly, I'm starting to wonder if I should have bumped it up to a place on the list. Is that all I have? I, I, I usually have more. God, this was a bad year. All right, anyway, let's end this with number one. We may never know how much great music we lost with the death of Amy Winehouse in 2011. She genuinely was one of the most interesting, dynamic performers of the 2000s, and who knows what else she could have done. And she seemed to bring out the best in her collaborators, too. For example, this guy over here had his big success working with Miss Winehouse. They just, they just seemed simpatico, you know? He liked retro, she liked retro. The two of them, they just, they just clicked. They might have kept working together, too, if not for Amy Winehouse's tragic death. Because, after all, what singer could ever be able to match Amy's style? Who else could pull off a song like this? Hmm, that guy seems to be pulling it off. Maybe he should work with that guy and see what comes out of it. Don't believe me, just watch! And to think Bruno Mars ever wasted his time writing garbage like It Will Rain or Grenade. I mean, that's just baffling. And even though those songs had a style that was undeniably his, I choose to believe that the real Bruno Mars is the one pretending to be other people because he's far, far more convincing stealing moves from James Brown than he is doing his own thing. And in this case, having already blown through Earth, Wind & Fire and Prince, he's now decided to be Morris Day in the time. Just like Wiggle kept topping itself with a new low point every couple seconds, Uptown Funk kept amazing me by piling up a great moment one after another. You can't take apart a song second by second and evaluate each of them separately. But I assure you, if I could, I'd give every single one of them a 10 out of 10. Everything about this is great. Hot damn! Call the police and the fireman, I'm too hot. Make a dragon want to retire, man, I'm too hot. This came along right at the end of the year, just in time to be on the list and snatch the number one spot. And while I was writing this list, the best song of 2014 became the first new number one single of 2015. And thank Christ for that. I don't know what's going to happen this year, but it's already six billion times better than the last. Let's hope for more of this in 2015, alright? Don't believe me, just watch. Come on!